David Waters from Gators Breakdown, uh, breaking down Florida football with uh, National Signing Day just uh, two weeks away. So we'll focus on recruiting. If you don't know about David's platform, I can't imagine that you like Florida football, don't know about David. But even if you just, if you're a fan of any college football team, especially in the SEC, and you want to lock in, if you're really a hardcore fan, uh, I suggest that you listen to uh, David and the rest of the crew there at uh, Gators Breakdown. It's just great college football analysis and talk. Let's get to the recruiting and uh, the guys that you're really eyeing and that you would love to see come into the fold in the next uh, couple of weeks. Yeah, Mark, Florida's only really got about enough spots, three or four more uh, for the next uh, you know next two weeks, kind of focusing on uh, three or four more targets here. Uh, and that's about all they have room for as well. Starts big time with cornerback Kyrie Elam. Uh, the, the 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 last name may sound familiar to people who aren't really familiar with Florida of Matt Elam. He's the nephew of a, a former former Gator safety Matt Elam. So uh, big time prospect. He's coming off a visit to Georgia this past weekend. Uh, Florida the weekend before. Uh, kind of crazy storyline there. Mark is uh, Charlton Warren, Florida's cornerback coach, left for Georgia uh, last Saturday while it, and that was announced while Kyrie Elam was making his visit. Uh, to Georgia. So, you know, I don't think the timing was any mistake there uh, of Kirby Smart announcing uh, that uh, uh, Charlton Warren was going to be the Georgia's new cornerback coach. But Florida came back right away uh, two days later and named Torian Gray. He comes back from a 2016 stint with the Gators uh, and, and taken over there. So uh, a lot of experience uh, with from his years at Virginia Tech, the one year at Florida he had before he went to the NFL and the Washington Redskins the last couple of years. Uh, there, so it comes back to Florida. Uh, there is a connection to Kyrie Elam's dad there as well. Uh, Kyrie Elam's dad uh, has a friend who played with Torian or co- who Torian Gray coached. Uh, so a lot of respect there. So it will be a Florida Georgia battle down to the wire for Kyrie Elam the next couple of weeks. Uh, I'd say it's about 50 50 right now where he goes. Uh, does he stay in state to, for Florida? Or does he does he go to Georgia? So that's a definitely big time battle uh, there to watch. Another's defensive line, Charles Moore. I uh, took a visit to Gainesville a couple weeks ago. Off of that visit, named Florida his leader. Uh, but that was before, and we'll go to another coaching change again, before uh, Sal Sanceri, a defensive line coach, left to go to Alabama. And uh, so we'll see. Florida still looking for that for that next hire, Chris Wilson from the Philadelphia Eagles, who just got let go there. He's a hot name uh, there to watch out for. So Charles Moore was Previously committed to Mississippi State uh, and committed to Dan Mullen and Todd Grantham there uh, and stayed committed to them about until about a month ago. Uh, like I said, visited Florida a couple weeks ago, named Florida his leader. Hasn't said much since that visit, except now that he's going to visit LSU and FSU. So two visits to, to look out for there. So Charles Moore, a uh, position of need for the Gators uh, along that defensive line. So one of the most important targets that Florida can get. And then uh, also Mark Anthony Richards, big-time playmaker from South Florida. Uh, Florida's kind of introducing him to that Kadarius Tony role that they have now. You can play receiver. You can play running back. We'll make you a playmaker. And then another big time is Alabama commit Chris Bogle. Uh, looks to be visiting sometime soon as well. His mom would like him to stay with Alabama and be coached by Nick Saban. But with all the coaching changing, changes going on to Alabama, Bogle – is now going to take some visits after he committed to Alabama at one of the uh, all-star games. Uh, so we'll see where that goes. That's the four guys I'm keeping an eye on. Uh, if Florida can somehow get Elam Moore and Mark Anthony Richards. I think Gator fans will jump up and down with joy with the, with, with the finish that Dan Mullen would be able to bring in. Yeah, it's already the 11th ranked class in the country, number five in the SEC, according to the uh, 247 rankings with uh, nine early enrollees. These kids getting on campus uh, more and more than ever before. Uh, 12 signed and two hard commits right now for the Florida Gators. So we total at 23 and Dave thinks they'll be in the 25 or six range somewhere in in there, right? Yeah, that's about, yeah, they'll, they'll sign... I, I think they'll end up with about three more. And you know, the three that I just mentioned, if they can grab those, uh, they'll be completely happy with the class. They, they filled a lot of needs along the offensive line. They had seven offensive linemen uh, signed early, and that goes back to what we just talked about. Uh, Mark, you know, they, they just lost four guys to the NFL. They're going to have to you know, fill them back in uh, eventually with some depth. They got some good young talent there that's kind of inexperienced, but they signed seven this past uh, cycle or this cycle that they're in right now. Four last year, so 11 offensive linemen in the last two classes for the Gators. Uh, Dan Mullen and John Hevesy, the offensive line coach, they're definitely 
know what it takes to win in the SEC. It starts in the trenches and uh, to see if they can build upon uh, what they did in year one with that offensive line. And obviously off to a great start for 2020. I see a number four in the nation. Obviously, it doesn't mean a whole lot right now, but still Dan Mullen getting the job done, even projected toward 2020. Uh, while we've yeah, got Mark, but, uh, I'll, I'll say something about sure. Uh, 2020, 2021 is also off to a great, great start. So why you know while it is far away, you know there was a lot of flack thrown towards Dan Mullen because of the slow start of the class that they're trying to finish now, this 2019 class. So, you know, while it is far away and while it is, you know, a lot of these guys may not stay for a, another year or, or two years down the road. If, uh, if a lot of people were going to throw a lot of flack at Dan Mullen for the slow start that he got off to in 2019, probably a little kudos for the fast start in 2020 and 2021. So, David, while we've got you for just a couple more minutes, uh, obviously a lot of people that watch me watch uh, the national scene or the SEC and uh, can't really lock in on 25, 26 players. If you're going to highlight two or three from this class, and it doesn't have to be the highest stars, uh, maybe guys that stand out to you that you really like, uh, who would be those guys? And I know that's a difficult question to bury <laughs> it down to, to two or three. Uh, uh, one right now, Chris Steele's the cornerback that came in. Uh, you have Marco Wilson coming off the knee injury uh, the, from this past year. Don't get me wrong; he'll be he'll be the starter opposite uh, C.J. Henderson when the season starts. But with Chris Steele being an early enrollee and coming in, Jadon Hill, a, f- a fellow cornerback that's in this class, also coming off the knee injury. So Steele, when he gets, he's already enrolled in campus, of course, going through workouts and all that. With spring practice coming up, Steele's going to get a, probably a good bit of play in time while those guys are nursing some injuries. So you know, you may see him at at, at times just to get his feet wet uh, along with the first team. Uh, uh, along with C.J. Henderson, but you can't forget about you know Trey Dean uh, also out there who uh, who, who filled in uh, when uh, Wilson went down this past year. Uh, but they may move him around a little bit. So I think you will you might see Chris Steele a lot lined up with, in the spring, uh, lined up opposite C.J. Henderson as one of the top cornerbacks on, on the uh, on the field. Uh, Muhammad Diabate uh, as well, one of the smarter players that Florida's brought in, one of the more mature players as far as just how he carries himself, a big-time playmaker, too, 6'3", 215. Uh, he'll be at that kind of outside linebacker rush in uh, that we saw Jacob Light flourish at. So come in, can, how, how, how much weight can he put on pretty fast? Uh, or how fast can he put on some weight to, to get there uh, and get up to, to, to play in weight? But he's very versatile, very fast. I do expect him to get on the field. Uh, offensive lineman as a group, we'll see how those guys come in uh, and, and able to get along with the Nick Savage's weight program and how fast they can come along. And I also throw in um, down the road. It, it's very important, Mark. We talked about the the quarterback problems Florida has had for years and somewhat now figured out with Felipe Franks. You had Embry Jones come in last year, but Jalen Jones is another quarterback. Uh, that Dan Mullen has signed. So you look at the quarterback room now that 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 Dan Mullen has, and you have Felipe Franks, you have Kyle Trask, you have Emory Jones, you have Jalen Jones, and Dan Mullen himself. So you look at that quarterback room and you say, my, how, how different it has been from years past. And now he has quarterbacks that fit his system, fit what he wants to do. Jalen Jones is 6'3", 205, and runs a 4'4 in the 40s. So that's kind of the prototypical Dan Mullen quarterback when you go back and think about Tim Tebow and Dak Prescott and, and those type of players. So there's a few players that from, from this class that maybe not early on, but eventually I think will be, make a big name for themselves at Florida. Jalen Jones, uh, uh, ninth rated uh, at his position, dual threat quarterback, according to 247 Sports out of Richmond, Virginia. Uh, David Waters from Gators Breakdown, uh, breaking down the Gators for us, of course. Uh, David, it's uh, it's exciting to see what's happening with your platform. Uh, it's really exploding. A uh, lot of great stuff uh, that you guys provide uh, for anybody that uh, I can't imagine. Again, anybody watching us to talk Florida football that doesn't know you're out there. But just in case, uh, where can we find you? can find the uh, a lot of the, the stuff for sites uh, newsforjacks.com slash Gators Breakdown. You'll find every episode there, articles from uh, the TV station I work for, News for Jacks, uh, Gator articles that, that uh, all articles that pertain to Florida also posted there. But uh, also just every platform, uh, podcasting platform out there, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, uh, YouTube, much like you do right here, Mark, uh, as well. People can go find Gators Breakdown on YouTube and, and get a video version. Uh, so, yeah, almost everywhere you can find it, that's where Gators Breakdown is. And uh, if it just 
behooves people and makes it easier. Just Google Gators Breakdown and you'll find your way there somewhere. All right, David. We know you're running around like Kadarius Tony, but uh, hopefully we can track <laughs> you down to uh, talk uh, NFL draft, personnel losses, personnel gains through this transfer portal that's become a phenomenon of its own. Uh, yeah. The schedule and everything else that goes along with it. Yeah, absolutely. We should figure out any time now the Florida spring game uh, date. So we'll have that to talk about uh, and sign a day, as you said, two weeks away. So, Mark, we'll, we'll hit it, we'll hit it uh, around there again. All right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mark.